Hi, how are you guys? I hope this video finds you guys doing well. I want to start off by just thanking the Dubsado team for allowing me to present today and then just give you a little bit of information about myself. So to start off, my name is Tanisha Lee. I am the owner of Soirees by Lee. We are a wedding and event planning business in Atlanta, Georgia. I am also the host of Collectively Wed. We are a strong group of wedding professionals around the United States that come together to learn, to grow, and network with each other and share, you know, different tips and tricks that we've learned along the way to help our businesses grow. So today, I'm going to share with you guys how I use Dubsado as an event planner, and hopefully that will aid you in your business and help you work through some of the things that you need to on the back end of your business so that you're able to shine for your clients. So I'm just going to jump right into Dubsado and just kind of show you guys how I use each of the features and how it helps my clients um, with us having Dubsado. So first um, thing that I want to mention is that when you are setting up Dubsado for the first time, or if you have already set up Dubsado, but you're um, not finding um, yourself using a lot of the different features and tools of Dubsado, it may be because you haven't written out your process. <laughs> um, and so that's one of the main things that I want to go over with you guys is our process and how we use it to make things flow smoothly. Write down your process, meaning write down the steps that it takes for you to get from inquiry to a book to lead to actually planning the event and then also what is going to be your follow up process. And so that's how we're going to walk through the Dubsado system today. Um, I've got a couple of notes with me, so I make sure that I don't miss anything for you guys, but I'm super excited to share with you. So one thing that we all have in common is inquiries. Getting inquiries into Dubsado is super, super easy. That inquiry for us may come from our website or it may be a phone call. And I'll show you the two different ways in which we capture those and put them into Dubsado. So right off the bat, I'm going to take you guys to our website. So this is our website, Soirees by Lee, and this is just our contact page. And we have a Dubsado contact form, which is called a lead capture form, on our website, embedded right into our website where we capture the information from the client. So the clients will fill in their information here. And this information will auto-populate into Dubsado for us, saving us an actual manual step. One thing I want to point out on here is the uh, drop-down feature. So here where it says, how may we help you? Clients can select which service offering they want more information about from us. And this does one of two things. For certain services, so for example, our efficient service, it triggers what's called a workflow in Dubsado, and that's just a series of automated actions. So if someone clicks on this service and they submit the form, they'll automatically receive an email from us that includes our wedding efficient services guide. That's also true for our intimate weddings that we plan. Um, it is not true for our wedding planning and design clients, and that's because we have a different process that we go through to nurture those clients. Then we also have our event management and design. This one does trigger a workflow in which they receive information specific to event management and design services. Another thing that I'll note on here is that all of this information, I'm pretty sure I already said it, but all of this information does auto-populate over into Dubsado, and then some of the information will populate into some custom fields that we've mapped into Dubsado. So these are not things that Dubsado automatically captures like it does for your name. So for example, if we type in Meredith, Dubsado already has that field in our system and Meredith will translate over there. 
whereas it does not have an estimated guest count field already in our system. So we use the custom map fields feature to add this in so we're able to capture that information. We also capture how the client was referred to us, and this can be done in two ways. They can either type it in or you can do another drop down which will auto populate some information in Dubsado as well. And then of course we have a comments field where they can type to their heart's content, any additional information they want to send to us. So once that information is submitted on the contact form, it populates under this category here in Dubsado. So you'll see it listed under your leads and there'll be a full list of leads that will populate into Dubsado and you can have them automatically titled a certain thing. Ours are titled our contact form so we know where it came from because we use lead captures on other items as well. I'm gonna move this guy out of our way. So we also use lead captures on other areas of our website. Um, to capture other types of information. So the title of that lead may change depending on which contact form they're using. That helps us keep track of where um, they found us on the web. So for our example today, um, we're going to use this event. I've already moved it over to a job and we'll go in and we'll look at all of the different features. But while we're on this page, I do want to point out some things to you. Um, I'm probably going to be moving my face around quite a bit, so it's OK. <laughs> all right. So at the top here, something you want to take note of is the pipeline. This is awesome because it is totally customizable and I love that. So for our leads, we have them organized by all of the leads. This is default. This automatically comes with Dubsado. We've added general information sent, a consultation scheduled, and a formal proposal sent. This is wonderful for us because it allows us to further filter and category, categorize excuse me, all of our clients. So I can send my assistant into Dubsado and say, hey, can you contact everyone that has um, had a consultation on Tuesday and reschedule all of those consultations? They can click on this tab. All of those consultations will populate and then they can work the list. Similarly, they could go to the formal proposal being sent and follow up with everyone on that list. So it further lets you filter your categories. So once someone has paid for services, we move them over to this section, the job section. The, these people for us are people that have paid us money and are ready to work through our event planning process. We do a phased type of event planning process, so we customize our pipeline to include those phases. So phase one is our planning, our design, our coordination, our production, feedback, and so on and so forth. And you can customize all of these tabs too. But that allows us to move people through the process and then also do the same thing we did with leads. It allows us to work through them just by clicking and filtering um, the clients. So I'm gonna click on this customize tab so you can further see that. You're able to, this is where you go in and add those additional pipeline items that you might need. Um, and then also I wanted to note over here, we have additional pipeline items to categorize things that are efficient jobs or things that are backdrops that we do um, there so that we can further filter them out. On your projects tab, you can also show what you want um, visible to you. So the information that you want visible, you can kind of click these different items here to make them visible on that project view to make it easier for you. So we want to be able to, at a glance, see the date, see the open invoices, and see whether or not they have signed their contract. We want to be able to see that on the main page. And so that's why we have those selected. You have other options that you can select and other views that you can sort your information by. Another thing to note is that you can also sort your project list based off of a certain view. 
So anytime that I click on projects, I want this list to show first. So that's why this is checked. You have the option to show all of your jobs or all of your leads first. It's totally up to you. And then the last thing we have down here that you can customize are your tags. So these are project tags. We have used our project tags to designate the type of service that the client has chosen. And that again helps us to further filter things out and um, just look at some general reporting. So that is that field. We'll go back to our projects tab. And so we're still in the inquiry phase of this, um, of this particular event. So the client at this point has filled out the contact form on the website or if the client has called us and we still want to get them in Dubsado as a lead, sometimes we'll go to our website ourselves and we'll fill in the contact form on the client's behalf as we ask these questions to that phone consultation. And then we'll click submit and that'll automatically add them into Dubsado and get the workflow working. The alternative to that is to just click on new project and manually add them into the system. Okay, so let's go into the project. This is where it gets exciting for me. <laughs> so this is where um, the magic happens on each event for Soirees by Lee. In our phase planning process, we also, um, have different phases within the phases. So there's different steps and different processes that we have to take during each phase. So what we like to do is make sure that the client's portal is set up. We like to make sure that the client's dashboard is set up. And this is what we personally refer to as the client's dashboard. Uh, but this is just their project that you've clicked on. So in here, you'll find different tabs that you use and I'll walk you through how we use them. Um, for our event planning business. So I'm gonna start on the right actually um, with our notes section. So I'm gonna click on notes. The way in which we use this tab is during our initial consultation. So once someone has submitted an inquiry form and we've sent them an email with a link to our scheduler to schedule a consultation. So what will happen is if this was a typical event where it automated this in the workflow. So what I'm trying to say is they've gone to the website, they filled in the form, they've clicked submit, and they've clicked on a service that we offer where we decided that they should automatically get this information right away, right? So an email will generate, and I'll show you what that email will look like because you can save all of your emails in Dubsado, which is amazing in my opinion. So they'll get, let's do this one, for example. So they'll get an email that says, you know, thank you for reaching out to us. We've included a link to our services and typically the link to the services will auto populate right here. And the client can click on the link um, to our services to see our pricing guide for that specific service offering. So if the client is not in a workflow generated um, service offering and we have to manually go in and manage that client from beginning to end, we'll do the same thing. So we'll click on send email. We'll go down here and we'll choose which email it is that we're wanting to send to the client. Um, It'll auto populate that information here. And then this is the part where I wanted to point out is right here. They're able to schedule a consultation and we've just linked our scheduler there. So they'll click the link to schedule a consultation with us and it will take them to our scheduler. So then they're able to look at our calendar. They're able to pick a time um, that they want to schedule the meeting, click submit and finish. And once they do that, we get a notification that they've scheduled that consultation and then their appointment will show in the system automatically. So in preparation for this consultation, what we'll do is we'll load in a few things. So we know that the consultation is coming up. We're about 
10 to 15 minutes prior to the consultation, we'll upload a couple of things. So first we'll go to our forms. We'll upload our questionnaire. And this is just our consultation questionnaire. It um, just adds some general information and this helps us to stay organized. So no matter who on the team is taking the phone consultation, they or the Zoom consultation is that, they're still gathering the same information from each client. So it's remaining consistent. And this is a form that we will pull up. We will click on open and it will open in another tab. And then as we're talking to the client, we'll go in and we'll fill in all of the different information here. We'll type in the name of the venue. We'll um, type in all of the information that we gather from the client. Are there any restrictions at the venue we should know about? Because at this point, they've already booked their venue. Um, and then we'll go through and fill in the other fields. I'll, if you'll notice, a lot of these fields are not required fields because they may not have some of this information and it's okay at this point <laughs> for them not to have that information. But we wanna gather as much of it as we can. And you can customize these forms to work how you work and to gather the information that you need for your specific event planning business. So that is that form. Also, while we're in that consultation, um, we may just wanna take some general notes and that's what the notes tab is for. We can just add a note and say that this is the initial consultation and then we can say um, wanted balloon garland um, they requested that no one be seated prior to the guest of honor and then you can just save all of the notes in there and you can keep it running a tab of the different things that you talk about so everything is in the system. That's what I like. I like that everything is in Devstato and we can get to it rather quickly. <laughs> if there's a phone call that we have with the client, if it's not a face-to-face -face consultation or if it's not just a general note, we wanna log the call so that it's time stamped. Um, so we'll just click on call logs, we'll add a call log, it's automatically going to timestamp, and then we'll go in and add in what they talked about. Um, we could say client husband called to discuss budget, and then we can put in here that we advised him to check portal for a piece, right? And so then you could save all of your call logs in here as well. So that helps to hold everyone accountable. Um, so you can say, oh, I called you about such and such and such and such. Or um, if they called, if let's say he called and um, then the, the actual client called, and spoke to someone else on our team, our team can go into the call of, oh yes, um, Tanisha talked to your husband on 5th and they talked about the budget. She told him to check the portal for updates. Did you guys have a chance to do that? So those are some things that, that kind of help us and save us <laughs> in a lot of instances, keeping track of everything. Because that's typically the job of a planner is to keep track of everything and to basically know everything. And Dubsado is great for being able to track everything, everything. Um, as you can see, there's also an activity log in here, which tracks <laughs> what has been happening in this specific um, event or in this specific project. So yes, it tracks everything and that is amazing <laughs> for us. So once the client has um, done their consultation with us, they're ready to book, we send them a proposal. So we go back to our forms, we click into here, 
and we grab our proposal form and I'll show you what that looks like. So we grab our proposal form and we add it to the project. So I'm going to open this in another link so you can see it in a larger view. Okay, so this is what the client would see. So this is the way that we have formulated ours just using what Debsado gives us. This graphic here we made in another system and just inserted it in here. Um, but it has our information contact. It'll have the client's details here. Um, it'll have what package they've chosen here. If there's a payment schedule that they will have, it'll be loaded here. And then down here, we ask them to select if everything on this page is correct. We ask them to put their full name here. And then we have a package field that Devstato, um has in their system. And I'll show you that, how to add that in. But we use a pre-selected package and then they would be able to click submit down here. So once they click submit, it'll take them over to their contract. Let me go back to Dubsado and so you can see what a contract would look like. So I'm going to go back into our proposal and get a contract pulled up for us. There. So it'll take them to their contract once they click submit. And then if there's any information you need to gather from the client um, that you don't already have at this point, you can add in these fields where they fill in the information. You can have your terms of your contract listed here. And then there's the space for them to sign. And then on our contract, we have a space for us to sign as well. And then once they click submit, it'll then take them over to their invoice and the invoice items will be listed here and they'll be able to pay directly right here. So it's rather simple. That one link that we send them will contain the initial proposal. If they're ready to book, they can go ahead and sign the contract and then they can make their payment. So we'll go back into Dubsado. So once somebody has paid their retainer with us, we start the planning process. So our team goes in and we manually add these items, but some of these you can automate within Dubsado, but we like to be very hands-on. Um, as a planner, some of, some of you guys know, we like to be in control of the situation. <laughs> so for, for me and for my sanity, it's great that I can go in and manually do these so I can say, yes, it has been done. So for our clients, we add in our event planning checklist for them under the tasks option. We use project boards to do this and we'll just simply add the board in here and I'll click on it so you can see what it looks like. This just goes into like a high level overview of what our planning process is going to be with the client so that they know what we're doing. We see he so and so, it's time for phase one. This is what we'll be working on. We're gonna work on your budget, we're gonna make sure the venue's been selected and any vendors that we need to secure, we're going to do that as well. And as we check off these items, the client can see that we've checked them off. And if there's something that the client needs to work on, they can check them off as well so we can see where they are. And we guide them through this entire process which is really, really cool. Other task boards that can be used um, in here, you can make these either private or available for the client to be able to utilize as well. Um, so for this event planning checklist, we just edit the private settings and we put it in their client portal so that both um, myself and my team and the client can both check off items on that list. We also will add in here a board um, that is specific to our back end process, and we would select private, um, the admin and its sign users option 
to make that board a private board, which means that only myself and my team will be able to see what's on that board and we can check off items on the back end. So we'll add those two boards to a client's project. Once we've added that board, we also go back in and we add any forms that we need the client to take care of immediately. Um, so we'll add in this questionnaire, which is their vendor tribe. And these are all forms that we made within Dubsado. You can make them very, very quickly, which is what I like. And then they're there forever. You can have Dubsado, um, you can use a workflow in Dubsado to have it automatically load these forms into the client's project. But again, we like to be, we like to do it manually um, at Soirees by Lee because we just like to physically touch <laughs> a lot of these things. Um, once we get into our busier season though, we will activate a workflow and allow these things to auto populate into the system. But in slower seasons, we like to make sure that we can um, say that, yes, we did it. So on this form, um, we just have them fill in all of their vendor information. So it's like right there. Currently, Dubsado doesn't have a way to capture the vendor's um, contact information and just have it stored in Dubsado yet. So we made this form to make it easier for us and something that we can just click on and go to. It's also wonderful for the other vendors. So it makes making our timelines easy. It also helps the venue because sometimes I'll get requests from a venue, hey, do you have such and such um, information? I can say, yes, I do. I'll click here, I'll go to their event, and I'll pull it up. So they'll be able to list all of their vendors and contact information in here. And then right here, we have an option for them to upload any contracts that they've received from their vendors. So if they've booked a vendor uh, without our recommendation or they booked a vendor prior to booking us, they are going to enter in that vendor's information, upload that vendor's contract, and we have access to it all the time, which is wonderful. Everything is in one place. So we send that out to them, so that gets put in here. Um, any other questionnaires or things that you might want to have the client uh, fill out can go in here, but you can pull them all here. These are all the forms that you've made in Dubsado. And then if you scroll to the bottom, you have some special links, which is what I like to refer to them as. Um, you can do your one-time thing. So if you need to make a one-time proposal, a one-time contract, you can do all of that here. And you can also do what's called a one-time link in their portal. And I'll show you what that looks like as well. But this option right here, upload new PDFs form. So let's say you have your clients send you all of their forms in email, or maybe they just do it on their own. Um, you can upload those forms into Dubsado as you're planning the event. So you can keep everything in one place. So let's do that. Let's click on upload. And we're just going to drop in their design elements. So we like to create a design board. We create it in Canva. We save it as a PDF. And then we just upload it into Dubsado to give them an idea of what the design will look like. And now it's there in Dubsado. And this is something we want the client to be able to see. So we'll just click on Apply to Portal which we'll do on a couple of these other forms as well. This questionnaire is just for us. This is the initial consultation questionnaire, so we don't need to apply that to the portal. And I'm gonna add a few more forms so then I can take you to the portal and you can see what that looks like. We'll add this in here as well.
Okay, so we've added all of their forms. We have some PDFs in here. We've had some auto generated forms that we have made in here as well. We have their contract in here. Um, let's make sure that their invoice is loaded in as well. So I'm just going to click on invoices and just create an invoice rather quickly because all of our packages are in here. One thing I also want to note about Dubsado is don't get hung up on the titles of things. <laughs> get creative. So these are not necessarily all packages. Packages are just the items that you sell. So for us, that could be wedding planning services. Um, that could also be, let's see, let's take that one out since we're doing a birthday party. Okay, so let's say they want some decor, some design, um, and let's just add another one on here. We'll add that in. And let's say they got a backdrop. Okay, so you've got an invoice in here and we'll just do a payment schedule in here as well. Let's say they're making two payments. Okay, so all of their information is in here and this will be their event invoice. Okay, so once we've loaded in all of the forms that we want to give them access to in the initial design phase of our um, planning process, then we give the client access to their portal. We send them an email. That welcomes them to our planning services. And it just kind of gives them a little bit of next steps. So next, we'll schedule your site visit and consultation. Um, then we want you to go ahead and fill out, if this was a wedding, we would want them to go ahead and fill out their wedding party questionnaire. If it's an event, we might ask them to fill out the vendor tribe form so that they can let us know what vendors they've already booked. Um, and then we'll send them your design form. This form will let them upload any pictures that they um, inspiration photos that they want us or they can just add us to their Pinterest board if they'd like and then we let them know to look out for another email with um, instructions on how to access their portal so this is the email that they get right after they pay um, so we've loaded all their forms they've paid for their services we send them the email and then we activate the portal so you just click on portal which is right over here at the bottom and you click on activate. I've already activated this one so that we could see what the portal will look like. Let's see, okay. So it'll take them to their portal. They'll enter in their email address to log in and it'll take them directly to their portal. This um, graphic up here is something we made in another system and just uploaded it to Dubsado. And then you can also customize the colors of the fonts here and the colors of the tabs here. So we used our business colors for the tabs just to kind of keep branding on point. Um, Dubsado also has a way for you to um, mask this web address up here so that it can show like portal.soireesbyle.com. I just don't have it activated right now. But that's also an amazing feature as well. So once the client is in their portal, this is uh, what the client will see. They're able to access all of the different things that we've given them access to. If they have multiple projects or multiple events with us, they can click on this tab. Traditionally, this tab says projects. That's why you see it saying projects when it's highlighted, but you can customize this tab to say whatever it is that's relevant to your business. Obviously we're event planners, so we changed it to events. So they could click here. If they have multiple events with us, they can select here and select which event they want to check on. So for this client, it's just the birthday. They're able to see what appointments they have coming up with us. They're able to see their invoice. So if they click on their invoice, It'll take them directly to their invoice so they can always make payments directly from the invoice. 
it'll show them their contract. And then of course, it'll show them any document that we have given them access to. So it'll let them know, hey, your vendor tribe form is incomplete. So that's something they know that they can go ahead and work on. Their proposal is incomplete and that's only because um, this is just an example. Um, and then any other of those PDFs that we loaded earlier are in here as well. So that's how we load in the client's layout. We do our layouts in another system, again, and we download them as uh, PDFs, and then we just upload them to the client's portal. Um, so that's pretty cool. I do like that particular feature. Um, timelines. So we use um, Timeline Genius to create our timelines. It's a fabulous program. Um, and then we download a PDF again, and we upload it into Debsato. You can create timelines in Debsato, and I can show you what that may look like. But for us, we needed something a little bit more robust. So again, we just upload the PDF into Debsato, and then we can create our master timeline. And that way, for us, this is like the final timeline. We don't need the client to make any edits to it. And so um, that's why it's in PDF form here. You could um, also upload other forms in here as well that the client may need access to. They have an option to check all the emails that were sent from us in Dubsado in their system. So they can go directly here to their email box and see what emails um, have been sent to them. It's also time stamped, which is amazing to me um, to let them know when the email was received and when it was last viewed. That's been a game changer for us because sometimes you'll get, oh, I never looked at it, but it, we can show that, oh, it was sent on this day at this time and it shows that you received it. Oh, it looks like you didn't um, get a chance to open this one. Or if we see something that's not been opened, we can follow up with the client. Or um, we click on this one, for example, we can see here that because we clicked on it just a few moments ago, it shows when we last viewed this document. Oh, I can see that um, it's showing on our side that you looked at it a few minutes ago. Did you have questions or anything about that? That kind of thing. It's been pretty cool. There's other information you can capture from the client here. That's their contact information. But the portal is amazing. Um, it, it really has helped with keeping everything organized for our clients. They can see at a glance what they need to work on, what forms are incomplete what invoices are still open, how much more they have to pay on that invoice. All of their signed contracts and agreements are right there. And then they can go further to see other documents that have been loaded into the system or that have been completed. So I love, 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 love using the client portal for my clients. Okay, so we'll go back to Debsado. And another thing that I wanted to point out in Debsado that we used were those custom mapped fields. So if you can see right here, custom mapped project fields, these, I'll show you how you create them, um, but we've already created them and these are fields that will automatically populate based on the information we put in some of our contracts or in some of our forms. These things are things that can also automatically be loaded into the system that may not necessarily be in Debsado already. So for event planners, it's important for us to know what our client's guest count is at a glance, um, the name of the venue, what time we need to be there to set up if we're doing design, any special requests from the client. Um, if it's a wedding, we need to know the couple's married last name. Um, and then themes or colors that they may pick out. Um, those are things that we have to get to at a glance. So if we're out shopping for new furniture pieces or we're out shopping for new inventory um, and we're like, oh, my gosh, I can't remember what so-and-so's color is, we can pull up Dubsado on our form, look in their profile, and it's right there at a glance for us. Um, if we were out and we quoted a package before we sent a proposal, we'll put that there. Because we offer efficient services in our event planning business, uh, we 
put down who has been assigned to that service. This is also a good space if you have um, multiple people on your team who's in charge of, of a specific event, you can also make a custom map field to put who's going to be assigned and have that show up in different places on your form. And then this one is a new one for us because of the pandemic, we added an original event date field. Um, because we did have clients that needed to reschedule to next year. So what we decided to do was put their original date here. We send them a rescheduling agreement. And it will auto populate their original event date. We change the new event date so that it will auto populate here and then they just fill in this rescheduling request for us so that we have it on file as well. So that's been pretty awesome to have it automate a lot of the different um, pieces of information that we need and that we gather from our clients. Um, so that's kind of how we use our client's dashboard here, which is your project that you're clicking into. That's how we use it um, to help us plan our weddings. Oh, this spot here, project status, that's important. So that's where we change the pipeline items. So I'll move myself out of the way. And this is how we move them through the phases. So we can say, oh, they're in phase one of planning. They're in phase two. We've done X, Y, Z. Now we're getting ready to coordinate um, the event or work on the timeline. Now we're in production. The, it's the week of the wedding or it's the week of the event and we're in our production phase. So that lets us know where we are in the planning process. And that also changes where the client is located in the pipeline here. So I'm going to click over here on templates and just go through a couple of these rather quickly just to kind of show you guys what these sections are for and how we use them. Um, of course, you've got your reporting and things like that where you can look at different things in Dubsado and that's important for us um, as event planners to know where our leads are coming from so we can know where our marketing efforts should be shifted. So this is a way that we track it. Um, this is our project sources. This is where we get our leads from. This is how many projects came from that lead. Um, and it'll just track it that way for you. So that helps us with our marketing and our event planning business. And then there's other types of reports that you can utilize as well. We talked a little bit about our tasks and our boards that we use, but we do have other boards that we use, like we have a website maintenance board, bridal shows what our process is going to be for that, but this is a good way for us to create the different checklists that we need in order to check off um, different tasks within a project or within an event. So back under our templates, there's a few things in here that we use as well. We've already mentioned our scheduler. So you can create a scheduler, a calendar for people to be able to book your services or book consultations with you. These are good for your initial consultation, but these are also great for those consultations throughout the planning process. If you offer a, a specific number of uh, planning consultations, this would be great. You can send these out so that they can schedule those and you can keep track of how many they've had because it'll show in your appointments tab. And then um, you can also create different types of uh, schedulers as well. So for example, we also offer workshops sometimes. Um, this one just happens to be a paper flower workshop, but for our event planning clients, we might offer an event planning workshop or a wedding planning workshop where we have the brides come in and we show them some kind of DIY thing. This is great for us because we're able to create it as a scheduler. We only book that one day and they're able to make a payment with this scheduler as well because you can link it to an invoice.
which is awesome. They get it all done in one step. Then you have your forms. Don't get scared. <laughs> I have a lot of forms and that's mostly because I like to play around with the different types of forms that you can make in Dubsado. So of course you can have your contract in here. You can have your subagreements. Subagreements are good for um, those one-off things. So like photo releases, um, if you're doing styled shoots in your event planning business, things like um, we have a partnership with a, with a venue. And so sometimes clients will book the venue directly through our um, event planning company. And so we need to make sure that we send the venue agreement over to the client as well. So we'll do that. Um, we have a separate agreement for efficient services. So let's say someone booked us for event planning and they booked us for efficient. We don't combine those two contracts because sometimes they may book that months down the road and we don't adjust the initial contract. We just send them a sub agreement and add that to their file. Um, and this is also where we put our rescheduling request. So anytime they need to reschedule, um, we allow a certain number of times that they can do this, obviously, but we'll send them the rescheduling request so that we have that on file as well. Remember when I said, don't worry about the names of things in Dubsado and get creative? This is what I'm talking about. So Dubsado has a form that you can create called questionnaires. That's the category. I don't want you to get hung up on the word questionnaires. Um, questionnaires are basically blank forms. So you can create all kinds of things with them. We've created, um, so for example, this custom intimate wedding uh, questionnaire where the client can go in. This is an all-inclusive package that we offer. Um, it comes with these things automatically, but it also gives them some flexibility on um, some of the other different vendor options that they can get with this all-inclusive offering. So it goes down to allow them to choose which venue they want to have this particular service at. They can choose a menu option. They can upgrade their dinnerware. They can choose which cake they want. Um, they can choose bar services, entertainment, all of the different things that come with this package. These are their options that they can pick from. And this um, form will tabulate a total for them. Um, we have it in two places. So let's go back. We have it listed under the questionnaire. And that's just if we're doing an initial consultation with them and we just need to gather that information and keep it in one place. And then we also have it over here in our proposal because this is where they can select it. It'll tabulate a total at the bottom. They can sign their contract and pay. So questionnaires are just blank forms that they can fill out um, different types of information. We've got other examples of timelines that you can use um, in Dubsado, and these were taken from the Dubsado um, template library. So you could create just a simple timeline like this where you have your um, logo at the top, You've outlined what the times are, um, and then you just kind of fill in the blanks. And then this is just another example of a different type of timeline where, again, the times are just listed there. And then instead of um, using the Free response fields, you're using columns, and then you're using text boxes to add in what's happening during those times. So those are some simple timelines. Again, we like our timeline to be um, rather detailed for events. So we use a different system to generate the timeline um, because that system automates a lot of our timeline items for us as well. And then we just save it as a PDF and upload it to Dubsado which is great because it stays in the client's portal. And then we have other things that we keep in here. Um, maybe we want to send out a pricing guide to somebody, but we don't necessarily want to send out a contract and an invoice at the time. So we'll use the questionnaire field as a form, just a blank form. 
and then we'll send them a pricing guide to say, oh, here's the service. So think of this as like our brochure. Um, and we created this just using what Dubsado had available to us. Um, these are, I'll show you how we did that. So up here, we just added an image right here. This is just a text box where we just typed in our information and formatted it. Another text box. This is another image that we made in Canva and we just inserted the image here. And then we just inserted text boxes down. This is a column. Um, this is two columns. So we clicked here, we made a column and then we put a text box on one side and an image on the other. And then we have how we're going to plan it in our phases, what your payment structure will look like, and then just some inspiration photos at the bottom of our different wedding. This is great because if um, sometimes I tailor this specific to the client. So if I've gotten to a point with someone, they're like, oh my gosh, I really wanna do something rustic and blush, then I can just go in, and any of the images that I have saved in Dubsado will already be here. And I can just click another image and tailor it to that specific client's um, needs. And then if you, if you need to upload a new file, you can do that here. So you could just go into um, whatever image it is that you want on your computer and just upload it here. You can drag and drop or you can select select image and it'll upload it in here but it only takes like five seconds to change out a photo and have it customized. Um, and sometimes I may not want to send all of these photos. Maybe they don't relate to what the customer is looking for. Maybe they want a beach wedding. So then I'll, cut, I'll put in the weddings where we did them at the beach just to give them a little inspiration to let them know that we were listening. <laughs> okay, so let's close out this. So those are questionnaires. Proposals are anything that you can also add a contractor invoice to. You don't have to add a contractor invoice to a proposal, but you can. Um, and there's different types of proposals that you can create. This is one where we created it, where it's automatically in here. Um, it's this specific package. We use the package feature, which is right here. So if I click on package, um, you're able to either create a new package or select a package that you already have and have that package automatically pop up in the uh, proposal when it's sent to the client, it will automatically tabulate that total down at the bottom for you. So that's where you can use your packages. And then um, lastly, there are lead capture forms which are the different types of contact forms that you can use. So when we first started this presentation, we went to our website and we filled in our contact form on our website. This is the where that contact form lives and breathes. So this is this contact form from our website. Uh, we have a separate contact form for efficient services. We have a contact form if they're ordering a backdrop. We have a contact form that lives on our event side of our websites. If they click on event as a service, they can click on um, the events contact form and fill that out and it'll come over. This is one that I also wanted to show you guys. So for those of you in event planning who also do weddings and who also do trade shows to show off your services or market your services, you can create a lead capture form for the show. So when I go to, this is bridal shows for example, I will, Pull up this form on my tablet, on my iPad, and I'll have this at the booth. People can walk up, and if I'm talking to one person at the booth, then maybe someone else walks up and they need some information, they can simply fill this out very quickly. It's only like five or six questions, um, and it will automatically send them my pricing guide so that they have it as soon as they walk to the next booth. It's automatic. Um, and then 
it lets me know what services they're interested in. And then when I go back to Dubsado, I can then, I can go to my projects tab and look at all of the leads that come from bridal shows because they'll be titled bridal show inquiry right here. So I can also filter those just to look at the bridal show inquiries. So that's how I use my forms. Um, again, there's a lot in here because I'm playing around with a lot of different things that Dubsado can do for you in your event planning business. Um, and so I'm just playing around with the forms. So there are a lot of forms in there. <laughs> Um, of course, you'll have those emails that we talked about. These are your canned emails. These are emails that go out all the time, so you don't have to retype them 50,000 times. Um, and those emails will have um, fields in the email that will auto automatically generate certain information. So it says, hi, client first name. This will automatically generate the client's name that's in their project and so that it's tailored a little bit more towards them. Of course, I have the link to my scheduler here, and then also I have a link to um, this specific the guide that's in our, um, in our project, in our event. And then I have my signature here that's automatically going to pop up anytime that this email goes out. So those are your canned emails and you can uh, change your signature if you need to change, edit the templates that are already in there. Put all of your emails in here so that um, you never have to type an email <laughs> unless it's specific to what the client is looking for. Of course, we already talked about packages. Um, those, again, are just the individual services that you offer. You can list them in here individually so that you can just create an invoice rather quickly. And then these are all of your workflows. So again, like with the bridal show, this is where I was saying with the bridal show, they fill out that form and then I have it set to automatically send the form titled Your Wedding with Soirees by Lee immediately after they fill out that form. So it'll automatically go to the client. And the neat thing about this is if you click on view, you can see all of the people that it was sent to. If it's sent, so where it says complete. And then if, if the workflow paused for some reason, then you can go back in and just send it manually if you need to. So I like that. I like that feature a lot. So that's workflow. And then lastly, you have your payment schedules. Um, these you can put in yourself. So for some of our events, we offer monthly payment um, and you can have it set to automatically put in <laughs> the payment schedule for you, which is a time saver, which I love. Um, and you can do this based on conditions. So four months before the project date, a payment will be due. Three months before the project date, one month, and so on and so forth. Um, or if you just do something where it's just two big lump payments, you can put them in, um, in here like that as well, which makes making invoices that much easier. So if we go back to our example and we go back to our invoice, And let's just create another invoice rather, rather quickly so that you guys can see what I mean. These are all of those packages we just looked at. We're gonna put our event services, okay, invoices in. And now we wanna add a payment schedule that's four months out. And then it will automatically add in the four months payment based off of what I said it needs to be. So for those four months, I split it into 25% each month. And then if we had a date in here, it would also calculate those dates for us as well. So let's say that this event is in June of next year. And then I'm just going to update this so you can see what the difference would be. So 
So if we apply payments, they'll be listed here. If you click on the send option, you can open it in a new window so that you can see the full um, invoice as the client would see the invoice. And do you see how the dates automatically populated as to when that payment is now due? So I'm gonna add a payment to this just so that you guys can see what that looks like. We'll add in, let's say someone um, sent in an extra payment or something like that. How they, you can put in what the payment was for. Um, just to know the or if the husband made this payment or if you wanna keep track of that, you can just put in some additional notes there. How the payment was made, maybe they paid cash and maybe they paid $200 on this invoice today so we've applied that payment down here at the bottom of the invoice if we go back to the client's view of the invoice and we refresh it the client can now see that the retainer was made at two hundred dollars what their remaining balance is they can either pay off that full balance or they can pay um one of these uh, payment installments here. And so because we did $200 towards this invoice, it knocked it off of that first payment. There's still an amount due by the due date. And so then they can make their payment that way. So hopefully that was helpful in showing you how we use Dubsado to manage our events. Um, at Soirees by Lee. If ever you guys have any questions, you can always find me at info at soireesbylee.com or you can find me um, on Instagram at Soirees by Lee or at Collectively Wed. For those of you who would like to take advantage of Dubsado and um, get a little treat for doing so, um, you can use our discount code, which is CWED, so that you can get a little discount off of your Dubsado membership. Um, I definitely encourage you guys, again, to write down whatever your process is. That makes it putting into Dubsado that much easier. It helps you to create those workflows um, because you're able to just type in how you work. Um, just like we did here, we work in phases. So we just typed in what phases we did and we typed in what workflows worked best for us in those phases. We use tasks to keep us on track um, and also to keep the client on track. And then we use client portals to keep everything organized. Again, if you guys have questions, feel free to reach out to me. I am an open book. I hope this was definitely helpful for you guys. And again, thanks for watching and thank you Dubsado for allowing me to present. You guys have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys later.